Welcome back to Enigmatica 2 Expert Mode, and unfortunately I'm going down with a bit of the English man flu, so please excuse me if the audio is a little bit odd, or if there are various coughing noises. Um, uh, my sinuses are having fun at the moment, let's put it that way. So between the episodes, uh, and I may well not be around for a few days just to try and recover from it a little bit, so if there's no episodes, you know why. Um, yes, so just to cover what I did between the episodes, I went and made a slime sling, which is excellent, by the way. If you haven't made one, you should. And also in here, I upgraded the tool station to a tool forge. So that will give me the various options here we have for the more advanced tinker stuff like crossbows and um, shurikens. And eventually, there should be like a laser gun. Yeah, there it is. Laser gun. That is apparently really, really good. But we're not there yet just yet. And just to briefly demonstrate the slime sling, if you haven't used it before, you basically point it at the ground, 45 degrees or so, and let go, and then use your hand glider when you get launched. And that will let you fly around with the greatest of ease by comparison with what we did previously. And uh, we have the slime boots on as well, so even if you cancel this, as long as you don't fall into lava, like in the nether, um, you're not going to hit full damage. So it's pretty good transport solutions all around, at least until we get flight. And we also have climbing gloves. Now, I did have a launch tower originally here that you can climb up and jump off, but now that I have the slime sling, there's just no need for it. Okay, so transport solutions done. On to, oh, a couple of comments. People were saying, yeah, because this doesn't double, you can just use the... Um, uh, just use the regular furnaces. Yes, you can. Uh, I use this generally because I like to pour blocks at once when I can. And this happens to be a fast way of doing it because everything smelts at once rather than waiting, you know, one after another in the regular furnaces. Other than that, yeah, absolutely. If you want one or two, just put it in a regular furnace and you'll get one block out or one ingot out. And let's get started with looking at some loot boxes. So we opened up a few mods last episode. If we have a look into industrial craft, this one is just the checkbox task, so I will get any of these. I'll just pick the first one. Um, you're not going to let me choose? Uh, okay, can I can I choose? There we go. Not sure why that has problems. And then we get into rubber, and we get into back box and tin cable. Rubber is relatively straightforward to actually get done as a quest because we have some rubber trees. I did that in advance, so a tree tap is normal. Uh, however, it's expert mode, so who knows what a tree tap actually uh, consists of. Uh, the same as regular, so that's not a problem. Um, I just want some, whoops, not the press wax, to the olive wood. And we'll just make a tree tap with that. And in fact, let's make a few because you tend to need them. And let's just put... Yeah, I'm running out of room. Okay, and because we've got the rubber already, we can just go out here, right-click, and get some of the rubber. And there's a couple here as well. Uh, I did try the cardboard boxes. They are do allow you to move blocks around. However, when you try and move tree blocks and you try and put them down, they rotate sideways and um, they don't line up with where they were originally. So please don't do that. Or at least... Not if you want this frustrating uh, time as I had. Blue chest. Liquid-fueled engine from advanced rocketry. I think we're a while... Uh, I mean, I am working on an install of Real Progression 1, by the way. Uh, I did have a look because it's now available on CCAN to use. Unfortunately, it's got a bit of a problem in that it tries to install two different mods. Sorry, the same mod, but two different versions from two different other mods. And it's a dependency nightmare. So um, I am looking to see if I can solve that one. And as soon as I can, then I will probably be doing some a KSP with Realistic Progression 1, which is great. So we'll have a look for that one when it comes up out. Um, uh, let's have a look. What are we going to do next? Is there any more of these? Uh, oh, in fact, rubber we just get from smelting this stuff, if I remember. Uh, let's just put some sticks in. And we should only need one rubber, so that... That should be fine. There we go. Do I get that? Should be. Yep. And I get another loot chest. There we go. I like loot chests. <laughs> They're a great addition to the game. Uh, let's have a look. Ooh, that's good. Unbreakable Wand is a builder's wand. And it's a pretty nice one as well. So yeah, that'll help with construction projects. I really am running out of room, aren't I? So we'll need to sort that out soon. 
And we'll do the same quest in forestry because we've got the sturdy, um, sturdy casing. At least I will when it actually recognizes that I've done it. Come on. There we go. That's one. And we've already done a carpenter, so we'll take another one of those. Yeah. And the squeezer as well. So we've got a lot of this stuff done in advance. And then we can get onto the circuit boards. That leads to farms typically and uh, thermionic fabricators and stuff like that. Uh, impregnated casing is not too far away, I don't think. Um, it's impreg. Uh, impreg. There we go. Impregnated casing. Uh, that just needs some oil. An olive oil will do the job. So I only need some wood of any kind and in the same carpenter that we already have. So that should be something I can do right now uh, because we have this setup over here. We've got this survival generator. It is full of power because this only uses power when, you know, when it's out or anything. Uh, let's get rid of that and let's put the recipe in. There we go. And it's working. So we've got olive oil, quite a, quite a fair supply. If I have to empty this out, I'll cry. <laughs> well, no, we can actually empty it with a bucket, I assume. Uh, that should be okay. There we go. One impregnated casing. And will you then give me this? Detect. I have got one. Ah, there we go. And we'll take another loot chest. I like this game. <laughs> All right, loot chest then. Uh, a heavy plated shield from immersive engineering. Um, okay. Is that something I can... <laughs> Do I need some kind of pistol for the other hand? Uh, maybe the laser laser gun from uh, Tinkers. That would be interesting. Um, some kind of rainbow siege kind of thing going on. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, a hamster wheel. I'm not sure I'm going to need a hamster wheel. Unless we can hook it up for power. Uh, we might need a lot of them, though, in that case. Cave Illuminator, those are actually quite good. So if you drop them above ground, they light up the caves below ground uh, underneath you for a certain range. Quite useful, particularly if you're going into, I don't know, an area with lots, of, well, certainly lots of caves. So Overworld will do, and you think you can just move them and uh, it will redo it uh, all over again. Good. I like these things so far. Growth Accelerator. Now, you might think, oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Uh, if I remember rightly, they take like a stack of 64 going straight down underneath a plant to actually make it worthwhile. <laughs> and it's given us one. Uh, no, no, we're not going to do that. Okay, uh, at least not yet. Um, apiary, and that leads off on to bees. Uh, anything else? Immersive engineering? Uh, anything? Yeah, um, I think I've already got this. Do I, do I have this one? Yeah, it's green, so I assume I've already picked that up. We can do the Thormonomicon as well, but that, uh, that's not going to be so useful. I guess we're really going into uh, industrial craft and possibly extra utilities. That gives us two water mills to get started with, some ineffable glass. That's quite quite useful, um, but uh, yeah. And some overclocker upgrades. Okay, let's craft a few things and get started with some uh, powered machines, I think. So one quick note, I find a pyramid. Looks like this. It's a pyramid. And inside there I found some spawners. So I took some cardboard boxes and I've got a couple in my inventory. Uh, lots of things to kill in there, unfortunately. It does take a little while. Uh, however, back towards our base then we'll be able to put spawners wherever we want them and create a farm. So, um, yep, that's a monster spawner. And I'm not sure, well, the metadata is says zero. I think they're both zombie spawners. There are, of course, the ones down there. However, uh, let's try the zombies, shall we? So that's another thing to get started with. And we're going to head that way. So let's just sort of go this way. And you get quite a amount of speed. The flatter you actually go in your trajectory, the faster you'll actually travel. And I'm not pushing forward here so I don't lose any height. And uh, it is quite easy to get back home this way. So, yep. And that's southwest of my spawn, if you're uh, following along with the seed. There we go. Safely back home, and I'm out of food, so I need to sleep. And I also picked up some inscriber presses from um, from a meteor that I saw out there. Uh, I don't know if we've got any... Yeah, we've got three now. Good. I keep getting silicone presses, but that's not a bad thing. And we get an extra queen bee. Uh, we've got some armor. Nothing excessive, although I did get a golden chest plate. We may be able to smelt those down. Other than that, it's just some leather boots, which I'll probably get rid of in the trash. And other than that, uh, all pretty much straightforward stuff. However, um, there is no reason why you can't create a mob farm that will have a lot better loot than that. 
So why don't we construct something for a mob farm then? Okay, to build a mob farm, we're going to go in with something simple to start off with, something like just a mob drop tower. And we don't have anything automated at the bottom that we have already built something over there. You can see it right there. Uh, we don't have anything at the bottom to really kill things automatically yet, but we do have the ability to just kill them manually. As soon as they drop down, they'll be low health, etc, etc. Uh, so to complete that off, we're going to need a few things. One, you need some redstone, I think. Um, let's just grab some of you. And probably some sticks as well. So let's just make some of those. Okay. And we're going to be going for making a fan. And let's try making two of those. And then do we have enough to do this? We have enough for one. I just want to see how well this does. So uh, we need another couple of sticks. And... Let's make a couple of levers. Let's go and check out how well this is doing. So I'm just going to sleep because we don't need night time to spawn things because we've got those spawners from that nice neat little pyramid that we found. OK, so let's just head that that way. Whoops. Well, and there is just a natural spawn. It's not escaped, honestly. There we go. So we're going to head up, and I left it on one side that I can get up easily. There we go. So if we just go straight up. Well, there we go. And we can go up here. And this is entirely sealed in now. There is a couple of spawners in there, as you might imagine. And uh, we haven't really done anything other than uh, encapsulated them, and there is a 3x3 three three space in the middle for them to drop down. Right now, of course, um, that space is uh, is pretty much not, not, you know, it doesn't have anything automated to kill them with, so we need to do that as well at some point soon, but in meantime, let's see if we can push them towards it. So I want to, um, let's see if I can get this fan working. Uh, is it just going to need a lever, maybe? Uh... No, it's pushing it woods. Why don't we just, just remove that for a second? There we go. That will work. And we can just put some couples. Oh. I've remapped shift and control, so it's really annoying when that happens. But climbing gloves should make it really easy to get back up, so no problem there. Right, let's try that again, filling in the outside. Sorry for that uh, sound issue. Okay, and then if I flip this, are you going to turn on? I can't move forwards, so why don't we just knock that block out? Let's go and see if that's going to push them down. Yep, looks like it is. I mean, we haven't got many of them yet, because it does take iron to actually make them. But other than that, uh, it's looking good, so... Zombies? And only two heart left, so that's good. Um, that should get killed automatically once we have... There we go, see? As soon as they get away in, the, in that fan upstairs, we need a few more of them, of course, on the cardinal points at least, if not other places, and we should get some mob drops. Uh, of course, they're not great, we're probably going to want to do that automatically, but we do have the start of a mob farm. Good, please do this as soon as possible, uh, because you're going to get lots of drops from it that are pretty high tier, but they are rare, so we want to get this started as soon as possible. Now, thank you to the viewers for suggesting that we uh, are able to make a cheaper hopper. Uh, you can make it with wood, it's not quite as fast, but it is a lot cheaper than going through iron. Uh, entirely up to you, of course, but if you want to make it, that's the recipe. Um, I think we'll just do that just to, um, in fact, can we make a redstone clock yet? That would be interesting. Uh, clock. Uh, we can make a redstone clock. Is there any way of making a controllable, like a timer? Uh, dark utilities, maybe? RF tools. RF tools is gold. Copper plates and chisel stone. Well, any kind of stone, really, but copper plates. I did quite like those. I did use those in the um, um, Ultimate Alchemy series. And, uh, yeah, they're, they're pretty nice. But for now, let's just go for something a little bit simpler. Redstone clock are you easy to make. Advanced redstone torch, really? <laughs> okay. 
So you need iron, uh, four iron, plus some skystone blocks, just to make a redstone clock. When the timer... Is there really anything in here that isn't something we can already get? Just gold, redstone, redstone torches, and machine base. So I just want some copper. And we're going to need to burn some more, well, smelt some of that up. I'm just going to use a regular furnace. Fine. Uh, I'm going to need a hammer. Let's grab the U. Got the second one free as a quest reward, so that's uh, no problem. And then let's just convert these into plates the old-fashioned way before we move on to something a little bit nicer. Got some stone here. And then we need to make... Oh, was that only two plates? Okay, so I'm just going to cook that uh, some gold up in there so we can make the uh, the whole block. But in the meantime, because we've got this wooden hopper, I can just hopefully um, connect it to there. Yeah, we'll see how fast that actually takes items out of this in a second. Once we've got um, yeah, barley, once we've got the uh, item made, you're finished. Uh, two, you need a uh, some more wood uh let's just grab i guess we can make slabs but i'll just make some more in this into planks there we go one two three and four there we go four fine let's make this up one clock and then the rest should be done there we go and then I think what you do with this, if I remember rightly, you have to look in the direction it's facing to actually get things done. So I'm going to need to maybe face this direction. And will you point downwards? No. <laughs> okay. One second. There we go. It's all facing the right direction now. Uh, we're going to need another lever, but we should have enough for that. And then we'll just place that there. And then we can say pause while redstone active. I will remember to do that this time. And the delay, we well, this is one second, and we probably have to increase that. Why don't we try five seconds? Okay. And is that actually... It's actually doing anything? Let's actually try it with some iron. Uh, why don't we just convert to... Well, I don't want to convert plates because that's a that's a waste. Let's uh, just make some iron in here. In fact, let's just do more gold because we need more gold anyway. Let's do another four. Pop you in. Aluminium would have been faster, but gold is fine. Gold does melt up pretty quickly. And if this is working, it doesn't show the the tooltip for me, uh, unfortunately. But if it is working, then it should. Start ticking. Although I don't hear a ticking noise. Oh, no, it is working. So we'll have to wait for five seconds. There we go. We can probably shorten that up a little bit, but that's going to be variable depending on which metal is being poured into here. So for now, that's a good way of doing it. And if you want to use it under something else, like a block pourer, then you can just turn this off and it shouldn't pour anymore. Pretty good. And I'm happy. Okay, I did want to actually get the smart output, but I don't have any ice, and I haven't found any ice in the world as yet, uh, which is needed for it. And I think that I've not actually used the smart output before, but it does seem like it will be useful. Um, let's see, use. Uh, do we have any? No, you can't really see it unless you actually go through another recipe. Um, but it is uh, seems to be a way you load it up with a cast, and it they will then output to the bottom. You can set it to push downwards, and then it will go into whatever you put underneath it. So sort of an automated way of getting stuff out of a I think a smeltery. Fine. So we now have some gold. We have some way of automating the smeltery output, which is nice. I may want to make another one of those timers for the block side of things and make it slower, of course. But for now, that's okay. Uh, we do want to actually get two generators. Generators from IC2, and they're going to need us to make a few other things first. So RE batteries, it's going to need some tin cable, some tin item casing, etc, etc. And it's going to need to make us, well, we can use a regular furnace, but I'd rather not. Uh, what's the iron furnace? Oh, that needs a regular furnace anyway. Um, 
Yeah, we don't want to have to go through this. So we don't want to make the basic item casings, make the basic machine casings, we're not allowed to. At least not yet, anyway. So we could get away with a regular furnace. But lots of cobble needed. Yeah, swings and roundabouts. Okay, and there we have two iron furnaces. We can, of course, replace these furnaces with the iron furnaces. I think they're just faster versions. I don't think they're actually electric or anything. Uh, that needs a, another tier, um, I would suspect. However, um, while we're doing this, we need to get some iron plates, which we've got, an iron furnace, and then the RE battery. This is going to require lots of tin, so I need to cook up some tin, and we have an ideal, aside from using lots of lava, we have an ideal way of automating that. So why don't I just put through a bunch of tin. And again, I'm not going to be too concerned about the lava usage. It's fine for now. So let's just put those in. And uh, that should get automated and pop down here. There's our gold. So we'll just grab that and uh, we'll be using it again in a little while. I think I've got some tin at the bottom over here, though. I do. Good. We're going to need a couple more things. We're going to need cutters. I think they're called cutters. Um, yeah. So there we go. Uh, iron, iron plates. Do I have any spare iron left? No. No, I do not, is the answer. Fine, uh, we've got plenty of ore, though. Whoops, yeah, let's just put eight through. And for the these, uh, it's not a bucket recipe, but uh, we just need two more for the cutters. We're also going to need, um, I guess, the hammer again. Have I got it in my inventory? Still, I'll put it back. Now yeah, I've got it in my inventory. Okay, so we're going to need to hammer uh, tin plates and then hammer them again, probably, to get those casings. So let's try this first. So there's a pair of cutters. And we can use that on tin. Um, we may have to get to plate form first. Why don't we get to plate form and we'll see. We could probably do this plate through Tinker's smeltery now to actually make it more efficient. But uh, just to get started, I tend to just use manual tools and then we get more efficient over time. So the tin plates, we may have to do this again. Ooh, has that my recipe changed? Or is it just me? Um, item casing. Tin. Oh, just one. So one makes two. And that will be fine. So let's just put that in. Plus me enough for one RE battery. And then we may have to just use these cutters to get tin cable. And then from tin cable, is it just formless? It is. Um, let's just make six of those. And that should be enough for an RE battery. Like that and this. Yep. RE battery. Iron plates. And an iron furnace gets us a generator. That should give us a quest and a quest reward. Come on. There we go. And we'll take a loot box. Fish and chips. I haven't eaten it yet, so it will help me to get more hearts. But um, yeah, I'm going to get eight of them. So that's pretty good. It's grain, protein and vegetable. So that's the best meal so far, in fact. Let's put this away for now. An important point if you haven't played Industrial Craft 2 in a while is what I always forget. Every single time I play the, the, the mod, I forget to use uh, an appropriate wrench. And what tends to happen is uh, it converts the whatever machine I actually uh, try to pick up again with the wrench back into a basic item casing or basic machine casing. It's horrible whenever I do it, uh, but we kind of think we can really charge. Well, we will be able to charge fairly soon. So upgrade to the wrench. Uh, we can make some of that. We can make a lot of that, in fact. Yeah. But to get started, I'm just going to choose to not pick something up, but ideally, once I've placed it. Uh, we need some bronze, but we did get some of that with a previous quest reward, so that's pretty good. And then we can use that to get the basic wrench. Not that I particularly want to chant it too much, but we have the basic wrench and we can get to a power wrench soon. Um, the generator we're going to put uh, in a wall somewhere, maybe, or maybe outside. Outside probably easier. 
Um, let's just put it over here, shall we? And then we can use underneath to pass along any um, any power. So generator can go down. And that will provide EU. Now we do have universal cables in the pack, so you can convert over from, uh, I think, this power, FE, straight over into EU using those, but they're just too, too expensive. We can't start with them. So we're going to have to start out with uh, either tin cable, which we've got a few of. It only deals with 32 EU per tick, but as long as you don't go into things like overclocking and stuff like that, you're probably fine. Okay, let's just put down three for now. Whoops. Okay, and then we're going to want to probably think about um, next steps. So what does it say in the quest book? So these tickets for geothermal generators, so we're powered from lava. And once we get some lava flowing from the nether, uh, that is another good point, by the way. Did I mention about ender pouches? I think I did last episode about them using hardened leather, not regular leather. So as soon as we get to cross-dimensional transfer, we can get to that. It's fine. In the meantime, however, uh, macerator would be good. Uh, bat box and tin cables would be mm, good too, because we want power storage. But in the meantime, or well, in the short term, we can get uh, the macerator first. So macerator. And I would assume that lets us double, but a uh, double ore that is. Uh, basic machine casing, which I may have worn around somewhere. And we're going to need some copper cable and some rubber. But we've got all the other pieces. Yeah, basic machine casing. I have that in the chest somewhere. One second. Okay, so for the circuit, uh, we're just going to need all these, but we have those at least for one circuit. Uh, not for more than one, unfortunately, but uh, that will do. And we're going to macerator. So another quest reward, please. There we go. And we'll put the macerator down. Great. And do you get me double ores? So if I just put one of these in, and if we go and get some fuel, in fact, I'll probably just convert wood over. Okay, up it goes. But I suspect this will be, well, maybe not that wasteful, but uh, yeah, it, we're gonna need a bat box to store this all. Do we get two? We do get two crushed copper ore. Good. And do you retain your power? You do. Good. Okay, so uses for crushed copper, co copper ore. We can smelt that up. And that will get us to one ingot each. Good. So that is doubling, essentially. So we're going to want to uh, macerate potentially as the first thing. That's uh, in uh, IC2. We can take, hopefully, a loot chest. At least I haven't seen any giant chance cubes. The, the, yeah, never, never open giant chance cubes. Okay, poutine. I'm assuming I'm pronouncing that right. If I didn't, I'm sorry to all of our Canadian cousins. Um, yeah, I've never actually tried poutine, or however you pronounce it. Uh, sorry again in advance. However, it's something I haven't eaten yet in game, so that will let me... Um, get some more progress towards more hearts. I've got two extra hearts so far, you can see down there. And that pretty much brings us to the end of this episode. Uh, we Last episode I went on for like nearly 40 minutes, so I'm trying to keep to just before 30 minutes here, just to keep this nice and regular and nice and straightforward. Uh, so yes, we've now got ic 2s beginnings. Uh, I'm going to go and craft probably that bat box off camera and then we'll install it and you've got to be a bit careful with orienting the uh, the bat box on which side is the input, which side is the output, etc. But um, for now, this is fine. And I've probably put these the wrong. I normally want to have the bat box in between um, machines and the generator. But we've got enough resources that I can move it if or can try moving it. But yeah, if we have a few of those, we probably want a bat box here and then an actual string of machines that actually use the power from the bat box. And eventually the bat box will get upgraded, so too would the cable. Uh, the tin cable is like the lowest type. Uh, the copper cable is 128 EU per tick. And then there is other, I think other tiers like gold cable above that. But uh, we don't need it just yet, not until we get to overclockers anyway. 
Is there anything else to complete? Um, no. We can now head towards a blast furnace from IC2, not the one from Immersive Engineering. An extractor will be useful because that would let me get more rubber out of those few trees that we've got. Although I do have more saplings actually going. Uh, extractor, uh, is that is that particularly onerous? Four tree taps, which is just wood. Basic machine casing. So we just need more of those basic electronic circuits and uh, we should be good. Have they actually grown out there? Let's have a look. Yes, they have. So this is a whole line of rubber trees here. And once we remove the leaves from them, we'll get more saplings and we can, you know, make even more and more rubber trees. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Sorry if my audio is a little bit off. I am coughing and sputtering in between multiple takes trying to get this episode out. So again, I apologise if I am away for a few days. We'll see how I feel over the next few days. I do want to get an RP1 series started, uh, KSP Real Estate Progression 1. Uh, I'm also waiting for uh, 017 of Factorio. It's not going to be in January, unfortunately. So we're going to have to wait for that, unfortunately. And there's a couple of other games we're waiting for as well, things like Satisfactory. We're waiting to come out of Alpha, or rather, we're waiting so we can talk about it. Uh, not that I have a key or anything, but um, if I do get a key, I would also want to be able to talk about it and show you that game as well. So plenty of games coming up. There's another couple of that I've forgotten. In the meantime, obviously, there are a few of the Enigmatica episodes, but um, I should be getting a, a larger variety. And then we're also waiting for the X4 uh, for the patch that enables shipyards, so I can show you those as well. But in the meantime, thanks a lot for watching, guys, and we'll see you next episode for some more Enigmatica 2. And if you've got any suggestions, please feel free, feel free to put them in the comments below. Subscribe if you haven't, click the bell if you want to get notifications, and uh, I didn't cough or sputter in all of that. So, as always, guys, thanks a lot for watching, and send some sympathy my way. See you later.